This is a bracket. This is the Herd Groin Lighthouse, and this camera is the Fuji X-H2, and that does lots of brackets. Join me today as we look at all the bracketing modes that the Fujifilm X-H2 has to offer. So today we're exploring the six bracketing modes that the Fuji X-H2 has to offer. And they are ISO bracketing, white balance bracketing, AE bracketing, the regular exposure bracketing, film simulation bracketing, dynamic range bracketing, and focus bracketing. I'm gonna shoot a series of images of the Herd Groin Lighthouse in each of those bracketing modes. We're going to take them back to the studio and we're going to have a look at them in Lightroom. I will also briefly explain how to set up all of the exposure modes. If you really like this video, please give me a like and a subscription. And if you would like to see more videos about the bracketing modes, any specific bracketing modes, let me know in the comments and I will do a video specific to that particular bracketing mode a little bit more in detail. So let's get on with it and shoot this beautiful lighthouse. So in order to show you the settings, I've brought the camera back to the studio where we can see the screen a little bit better. Um, there are some settings that we need to do through the menu system for the bracketing. So we'll press the menu button and we go to the camera icon, which is the third one down here. And then on the second page at the very top, we see the auto exposure bracket settings. Now if we click to the right on that, you'll see that we've got frames and step setting. So if we have a little click to the right there, you can see that we can change the number of images that we take the number of frames and I usually have this set to five plus or minus five frames and then we can change the step which is actually the stops so at the moment I have that set for two-thirds of a stop but I can change that all the way out and as you see at the bottom you can see the exposure guide opening out showing you exactly how over and under your images will be shot. Um, I generally keep this at two-thirds. If we step back um, we go to one frame continuous. One frame means that you shoot literally one frame at a time. Continuous allows you to just press the shutter once and it will fire off all the images in that particular bracket. And lastly, we have the sequence settings, which is currently set to minus, correct, plus. Um, but you can change that, for example, at the top, the first image will be the correct one, the second image will be the overexposed one, and the third one will be the under. But uh, my preference is for under, normal, over. So coming back, the next uh, settings that we need to set in the menu are the film simulation bracket settings. This is very simple. You can only bracket three shots, uh, three film simulations. Uh, so you go to film one, you set your first one, which I generally have set as Provia standard. You go to film two, set your second one. In this case, I have set to Velvia. And then you go to film three and you set that. I just generally set that to standard across. And then lastly, we have the focus bracket settings, which are a little bit more complicated. Um, you can go to auto where everything is done completely automatically for you, um, or you can shoot it manually. The number of frames will determine how many maximum number of frames that the camera will actually shoot. It may not need that. If it's um, a relatively short focus rack, it may only need sort of 15, 20 frames. But if it's focusing from very close all the way out to infinity, it might need 50 or 60. So generally work it out. Um, 50 is probably a very good bet to cover everything. The step just changes the amount of focus distance. Generally leave this at five and the interval means the time between each shot is taken. I leave this as zero because you really want to take those shots as quickly as possible in case something moves, leaves move or grass moves or something like that. So you want to get that focus bracket shot as quickly as possible.
So to access the bracket settings on the X-H2, it's a little bit different from the X-T series of cameras where you have to turn this dial here to a bracket setting. On the X-H2, you actually have this drive button here. And if I press this drive button here, you'll see that on the screen, we have a whole load of drive settings. Um, the top one is the ISO bracket. So let's look at that first. So here you can see that we have the three shots that we took with the ISO bracket. And as I was shooting RAW and JPEG, you can see that I've got the RAW and JPEG images in uh, Lightroom itself. Uh, I'm just concentrating on the RAW for this uh, particular example. This is the uh, correct exposure as far as the meter is concerned and was shot at ISO 500. This is the overexposed image, which was shot at ISO 800. And this is the underexposed, which was shot at ISO 320. Uh, as you can see, it'd be very simple to drop these three into an HDR and make a very simple HDR from them. Very simple mode to use the ISO bracketing and very well worth using if you just want to do a simple HDR or just to bracket uh, exposure three stops or so. If you wanted more advanced bracketing, obviously you would use the uh, auto exposure bracketing rather than the ISO bracketing. Um, obviously, you can introduce noise if your ISO goes too high on this. On the white balance bracket, you can see that we can change between plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three. Um, this will vary the amount of colder, warmer light that um, the image will produce. So uh, plus or minus one, it will go slightly cool to slightly warm, whereas plus or minus three, it will go quite cold to quite warm. And as you can see, this is the white balance as metered. Uh, this is the slightly cooler version. Uh, let's go over to develop module and see what that actually works out as. We can see that that is now shot at 4,350 as opposed to the correct uh, metering of 4,850. So that gives us the slightly colder version. And if we come to the slightly warmer version, that's gone up to 5,450. So quite a useful little uh, bracketing mode to have if you're quite, not quite sure about your color balance. But of course, if you're shooting raw, you can change that in post-production anyway. So if we come down to the main bracket settings here, you can see we have four different settings. The first is our auto exposure bracket setting, and that's probably the one we will use the most. So by selecting that, it will now shoot the bracket that we set up in the menu. In other words, for this current setting, it will shoot five images at two thirds of a stop difference. So this is the auto exposure bracket. Um, this was set up, as you saw in the menu, at two thirds of a stop. And it's uh, this is the underexposed. We go through to the correct exposure and then all the way to the overexposed in two thirds of a stop gaps. Auto exposure bracket can be used in any mode. Um, in shutter priority, it will change the aperture. In aperture priority, it will change the shutter. In program mode, it will change the most suitable shutter speed or aperture depending on the scene. So if your shutter speed is getting too low, it will actually change the aperture instead of the shutter speed. This is the film simulation bracket mode. We've set up the Velvia, the Probia standard and the Acros, and it will shoot three images each in one of those film simulations, but it must be shot in JPEG or JPEG RAW as the film simulations are not applied to RAW files. As you can see, I've got it set to RAW here. Now I think it only embeds the JPEG to show the preview image that it's actually using the film simulation. Um, so you still need to shoot the actual JPEG in film simulation to get the images. Um, this is the Provia standard. This is the Velvia. You can see the extra saturation. And then obviously we go to the black and white of the Acros. A useful bracket system to have if you're shooting JPEG, but probably not so much if you're just shooting RAW. Dynamic range, um, this doesn't need setting up in the menu, but there is a menu setting for it. Um, dynamic range in the menu, it will allow you to shoot 100%, 200% or 400%. What that means is at 100%, no difference is made to it. At 200%, when you're shooting DR 200%, the highlights will actually reduce their ISO by 200%. So you will have a lower ISO in the highlights, which means that uh, you can expose for the shadows and capture those highlights by the fact that the camera has reduced the ISO in those highlights. 
The same applies for 400 DR, DR400, only it's a more aggressive reduction in ISO in the highlights for that. And this bracket mode will simply take one shot at DR100, i.e. no difference, one shot at DR200%, so a slight reduction in highlight ISO, and one at 400%, which is a slightly more reduction in ISO in highlights. So quite a useful little bracket to have. So this is the dynamic range bracket. Um, as you can see, all three images are pretty much identical. The first one is dynamic range at 100%, so no change. The second one at 200% and the third one at 400%. Um, it's not an ideal image to actually demonstrate the effect of the dynamic range bracketing. Really, I need a very, very high bright scene um, where there's a, lots of deep shadows and lots of highlights and I'm what you should see, and particularly in the dynamic range at 400%, is that you will be able to pull back the highlights a lot better than you would with the dynamic range at 100%. And lastly, we have the focus bracketing. This is the one that we set up in the menu system. And uh, this allows us to shoot from a near point to a far point, and it will shoot as many shots as it needs in as many steps. And then we can focus stack those in Photoshop. So this is the focus bracket. Um, I focused on this front column here, uh, set a bracket range of 25 images, and the Fuji, it seems to have missed going all the way through to the background. It's uh, actually taken this column here as the rear focus point. And if you can see, I can go on to this one, you can see the rear one here is now in focus, and the front one is in focus in the first image. Um, I took them over to Photoshop. We go into Photoshop and I created a focus stack in Photoshop. Um, so this is the final focus stack. And if I zoom in on this bit here, you can see the front's all nicely in focus. And if I scan over here, this is also nicely in focus. Uh, incidentally, if you would like to see a video about focus stacking in uh, relation to the focus bracket mode, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I could put something together. The same with all the other bracketing modes. If there's a particular bracketing mode that you would like to learn a lot more about, let me know and I will put together a specific video about it. So that's all the bracketing modes. As you can see, I've got all the images here in a collection with a little scroll through them, all the different bracketing modes that are available. Um, some really useful modes available if you, uh, you know, want to bracket your dynamic range or your film simulations. A lot of them are probably tailored more towards JPEG, um, but obviously the most uh, important one is the auto exposure bracketing, which most cameras will have. Um, I use that all the time. As I said, uh, five images, two thirds of a stop, if dynamic range is a little bit higher or you know you've got a lot more contrast in the scene I might go to one stop or one and one third of a stop but um, really really useful modes um, powerful modes to have on your camera um, if you would like to know more about the individual modes let me know in the comments below and if you've enjoyed this video please uh, drop me a like and a subscription and I will see you in the next one